Um, yeah, so yeah, my name is Tom. Um, going to talk about uh, new stuff coming into JavaScript. So, JavaScript changing quite a lot, uh, has changed quite a lot recently. Um, so, um, I'm, I'm, and yeah, there's, there's a whole load of new features coming. Um, so, just about the names like JavaScript's the name, the official name on like Netscape and stuff, and they, they own the copyright the name or something like that. Um, and um, so ECMAScript is the official name for JavaScript. Uh, sounds a bit like a skin condition. Um, <laughs> ES5 is the JavaScript that most of us are using at the moment. That's the fifth version of it. Um, ES6 is what the thing that I'm going to be talking about today is like the next version, except it then got renamed just before it got released to ES2015. So it went up quite, quite a lot. Yeah, quite a big jump in the version numbers. Um, <laughs> some future, future features uh, which people work on in ES7. I don't know what they're talking about. Anyway, I'm, I'm going to call it ES6 because I don't want to say ES2015 again and again and again during the talk, but I'm wrong when I do that. I'm in correct. So, yeah. um, so uh, just one moment. I'm just going to reload this because it's not. Yeah. Hopefully, I'm working on that. Okay, so um, the, the first thing is uh, browser support. Um, we're, we're talking about um, you know, a, lot, a lot of new features, um, and um, some of them are supported in some browsers, some in other browsers. Uh, oh, fuck. Sorry. My, uh, <laughs> is it sort of the uh, descending yeah. elevator syndrome? Mm. Yes, I. I so I, 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 this is what I was could doing. be rescaling. Yeah, I've got to fix it. This is what I was doing just before I um, came in. And then I we guys came in and I broke it somehow. Um, so they they, anyway, there we go. That's nice. I'm still doing that. I don't know what that is, so we're wishing I could put that. Hopefully it's not going to get worse and worse. <laughs> 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 Sometimes it will be like, oh, that's exactly what I remember written, but in this character, it's brilliant. 
and sometimes it'll be, oh god, my eyes, no. <laughs> um, so, it, yeah, depending on what feature you're using, it really varies how much you're paying if you're using Babel. Sometimes nothing, sometimes everything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, let's go on to the actual features. So, just to warn you, I'm pretty much just going to be going down a list of features in this talk. I'm going to be saying, here's a this one, look at this, and then here's this one, look at this. There's no like, narrative that actually links these together. Good big one. <laughs> Can we yeah. ask questions as we go along? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yes, that's always good. Yeah, ask questions. Uh, if you don't understand something, uh, probably other people don't as well. Um, so, yeah, if you ask, it makes it all better. So, please do. <laughs> So, yeah, let's in cost. Um, I'm going to talk about let first. Let is basically just a new word for var. So, var in JavaScript, about how you declare a variable, um, it's uh, got some weird things about it, and um, you can fix them without breaking existing code. ES6 doesn't break existing code. All of your existing ES5 code will still work when you're using ES6. Like, you don't need to rewrite it. This is extra stuff you can use. So they wanted to fix bar and make it less insane, um, but they couldn't do that, so they introduced a new keyword, let. So let, so basically the rule that if you're using let is you just always use let. If you're going to use bar, just use let, um, and you'll, you'll be fine. I mean, the, you would have to be doing something totally insane for that to break in the middle of those. Um, what makes bar insane? Uh, I'll use your bar. <laughs> <laughs> Bar does uh, something called uh, hoisting. So if you declare a, uh, a variable at the bottom or somewhere along, somewhere in your um, function, it kind of pretends that you declared it at the top. So you can still use it before you declare it. It won't have the value. The value is that the, the initial assignment stays down where you put it. So you can write code like that. You can write uh, uh, that like that on the, uh, on the left, and it will print undefined. And, yeah. uh, and I mean, that, that's almost certainly not what you meant. You, that, that, that's a bug that you've written and you just haven't noticed. So, what happens when you use let is you get an error. Just like JavaScript, it's actually you, you try to use this before you, you declare it. So that's cool. That catches some bugs. It's nice. Um, it also has blocks code. That's the big thing. This is why they introduced let. Like, I mean, my thing is a pain, but no one ever notices it. Um, so, uh, block scope means that anywhere that it means you can declare a variable just inside a block. Now, a block is anything with uh, curly braces around it. So, um, in this example, on the right, on the left, on the, the, the ps 5 the old version, um, I'm declaring cake twice, but actually it's only once because it's all in the same scope. So, I said it's chocolate, and I said it's cherry, at the end it ends up as cherry. That's obviously not what I intended. What I intended there was to have on the outer, outer thing a, a variable called cake, and then inside the if statement, another variable also called cake. Um, and with that, it, it, would have, it would work in that way. So in, so in, uh, in let, I create a variable called cake, create another variable in here called cake, it's visible within here. We go out here, though, this is the one that's visible. Um, and that just lets you kind of it lets you scope things so that um, so that I'm saying I'm only going to use this variable in this bit. If I use it elsewhere, tell me about it, and that's that's useful. Yeah, I know in Java you can just do long curly braces and, and just have a nice little sort of enclosed bit of code. Yes, you can do you can do that in. Uh, in so you you now, you've always been able to do that in JavaScript. Now there's actually a reason for you to do that. <laughs> <laughs> you said you use an uh, issue to do that, right? So if you wanted to enclose a bunch of variables, you used to have an I, 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 I. Yes, yes, so I started calling functions. Yeah. A block around. Yes. If you're yeah. standing for immediately in the functional yeah. expression. Yeah. Which was yeah. just yeah. as ugly as it sounds like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it just brings into mind with all the same language. Yeah. 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 So, so yeah, you just mean, yeah, it's. Uh, yeah. 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 So uh, we also have const. Uh, const is like let, except you can't change its value. So, um, so const doesn't add anything to the language, it doesn't, doesn't, change, it doesn't mean change anything, it just stops you from doing things. But sometimes that's useful, sometimes I want to say this is a constant, I'm just going to declare it once. And in fact, actually, now I found myself um, just using constant, constant all the time for all my variables. 
and then okay, very occasionally using let when I actually want to use them as variables, because almost always all I want to do is bind the name to something. I don't actually want to change this value. If I do that, it's usually an error. Um, but you know, that, that's, a, that's one style of coding. That, that, so this is, this is something you can use. Maybe some people might just use it just for like, things that we more traditionally think of as constants. Um, so yeah, if you, uh, if you try to rebind a, um, a constant, you'll get an error. Uh, one thing to remember though is that it doesn't change how objects work. JavaScript objects are mutable. You can change, their, you can change the insides of them and everyone who sees them sees that. And const doesn't change that. It does, it, all it does is uh, makes a, uh, a constant binding. So here I'm setting favorite cake to a, an object. I can still go in and change object on name. It's not going to stop me do that. Um, yeah, that's so just, just be aware of that. It, does, it doesn't magically give you uh, mutable uh, data structures, which would be nice, but crazy. <laughs> um, and the other, the other big use, uh, one big use of, of let um, is <coughs> for loops. So, all written this code before, the, the for loop. Um, probably all written code where there's more than one for loop in the same function. And now, like, do you declare bar twice, and that's kind of incorrect in that, and now the you know, i is in scope of the whole function, do you declare i at the top? With let, you can like, say let i, and, that, and then that's in scope from just the for loop. So you can't refer to i outside of the for loop, which is usually what you want unless you're doing weird things like, <laughs> like detecting where, where, the, where the loop ended and things like that. So yeah, that's, that's less than const. Fairly small changes, but just make things neater, really. Um, and the browser support for them is actually pretty good. Um, they, this is the one thing that's even supported, I think, in IE 11, so in the actual current versions of IE. It will be at the very latest current version. <laughs> um, bizarrely, I think that isn't supported in the latest version of Safari, but Const is. I I don't know what's going on there. Um, I assume that's going to fix, fix it. Obviously, uh, obviously, these are both supported in Babel, and this, these are one of the things you can use in Babel with zero cost. All it's going to do is check that you're using it correctly, and then convert it to bars in the output. So, John, when you put uh, Chrome Safari there, is uh, that mobile, mobile Safari in Chrome? Or? Um, I just got punch. I, uh, I did a lot of reading of the competitors table and it was despairing. I mean, I just couldn't place the for the mobile browser system. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> there is, um, I will, I forgot to put a link on the slides, but I will put, tweet it or something afterwards. There's a really nice page which will tell you in excruciating detail every single feature, every, every browser that supports it, and every bug that, that they support has for it. <laughs> so if, you, if you want to know, you can find out. It's just yeah. Is Babel doing more than just converting lets to bars? Um, not much more. Okay. It's checking the compile time stuff. So it's checking that you're not using lets before you do. Oh, and if, if you if you are using um, if them within blocks, then it's renaming them um, uh, to, yeah. to, to okay. give you to give okay. you effectively the block scope okay. that you asked for. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, but uh, but yeah, it's it's very very little in terms of. Um, yeah, in terms of what's what's uh, changing there. Cool. So uh, on to the next thing: arrow functions. I think this might be my favourite thing. Maybe. Excuse me if I like. So arrow functions are the basic version of arrow functions is they are just a shorter way of writing functions. Um, so yeah, this is you know you can now write functions without having to say type out function every time. You know, uh, instead the syntax is the argument list. Then this little fat arrow, and then at the body of the function. It's like, yeah, saves you for a couple of characters, not a big deal. Um, there's also an even shorter version of it. So uh, if, if it's just a single expression, like not a, not a whole function with multiple things, you don't need a return statement. You can, you can drop the curlies and just put the expression in. And if it's a single argument, not, not a list of arguments, you can drop the uh, brackets as well. Ending up with this very short version, which is which is quite nice for things like um, mapping. So whereas before um, you I probably should have put that all on my mind. <laughs> um, whereas before 
the maps, you have to you know, use functions, you can now use um, arrow functions, and it's just shorter, which is quite nice when you're writing code that's quite heavy with like maps and filters and reduces and that kind of things, where you just create a hell of a lot of functions. So saving those few characters actually ends up being quite nice. It just yeah, makes me more, more willing to write little functions. Yeah, I, I, I do hate it when uh, I write a function and there's more characters given over to the words function and return than there is to the contents of the function. <laughs> so, um, but uh, this, is, this is the reason why, uh, why, I, uh, why I really like arrow functions, literally this. Um, <laughs> everyone's written codes where they're saying that's what's this uh, because JavaScript context is crazy. So, you know, I, I'm, uh, I've, got, I've got my method here, and then I'm, and I'm mapping inside, so I'm putting another function in there. Now, within that map, that map function, I can no longer, this variable no longer refers to the method of the, of the, to the object from which the method is attached. Sorry, it's hard to explain. <laughs> um, so, uh, with, um, with ES6, uh, sorry, with, uh, with, with, uh, arrow functions, um, the arrow function doesn't change the this context. So we have this arrow function declared here, but this is exactly the same as it was up here. It's not, not really bound, it's, it's lexically bound rather than dynamically bound. Um, and that, uh, that little thing, I, 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 maybe, maybe I'm just a terrible programmer, but um, a lot of books that I write in JavaScript are that I forgot to bind by this. Uh, I, yeah, I mean, and they're not the hardest bugs to track down, the hardest bugs to fix. You know, it's just like, let's edit that again. Uh, but I do it a lot, um, and well, I used to do it a lot, and now I never do it. Um, so I, I think that's really cool. <laughs> it's clean up sound. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's just, yeah, it's, it's nice. So I, 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 well, I think that's more important than the, uh, the brevity. Um, so, uh, I don't remember to talk about that, that's details. Um, so, uh, yeah, browser support is reasonably good. Uh, yes. Firefox, Chrome, uh, not Safari yet. Uh, not all versions of IE, that's never going to happen, but uh, it's an edge, so it will be an IE. And of course, it's in label with, again, almost zero cost. Like, label will convert it to will convert your arrow functions to regular functions and will actually add the that equals this for you. So we'll write it how you would have written it pretty much. So yeah, that's uh, really not too bad. So next one, next one on the list. <laughs> uh, four of this is um, there's a new sort of new syntax for iterating over um, arrays. And also over iterables, which are things which are like arrays. We'll talk very little bit about that in a minute. So um, again, all that go by the one on the uh, on the left. I, I do understand a lot of people would do they use for each or map, but I'm uh, trying to compare the uh, like to like as much as possible. Um, so the one, one on the right is the new syntax. It basically just lets you iterate over each item in an array. So similar to how you have for in, which iterates over the keys of something, for of iterates over the values. Uh, so yeah, it lets you do that. Uh, but I think the, the more powerful thing, which I don't have any examples to show you of because it's something that's very hard to put in a few lines on the slides. Um, but it's possible to, there's something called iterators now, and it's, so it's possible to make your own objects uh, which act like arrays in for of in, in statements. So you can make your own object that works in its own way, but is iterable with four of. That gives them a nice kind of common means of, of iterating over iterable type of things. And uh, yeah, the browser support's been good. With, uh, yeah, just the expected absence. Uh, yeah. yeah. So is that iterable using new, or what? what how do you? How you just how do you define it? Yes. Yeah. Um, you can define an iterable by um, you give it a special key on the object, but that special key is something called a symbol, which I'm also going to talk about today. But, okay. but basically, it means that it's a special key that will not collide with any string that you give it. 
Um, so it's kind of a way of like assigning to an object, but it's not going to conflict with any other kind of any other key that object might have. Oh, with the value side, that's usually generates. So uh, yes, I am. I'm going to talk about generators right at the end of the talk, unless I've run massive, massively over. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, do you still have to do that weird like um, object has own property key thing that has to do with for in or because it um, for in goes no. to the process? Uh, no, you, you won't. Uh, well, you won't just because a very like iterable type of things don't have random extra values that won't that don't aren't actually the members. It's only uh, the keys of objects do because we kind of use objects both to mean JavaScript objects and to map data structures. And yeah. I guess confused because of that. It doesn't work with objects. So it doesn't work with objects. It doesn't work with objects now. It works with arrays and array like thing. Yeah, I, I did say it's where the values which would suggest that, but no, no, it doesn't. <laughs> so uh, default and rest function arguments. Uh, another thing. <laughs> um, again, the one on the one on the left is how you would write it in ES5. Uh, we do this quite often. We have functions, um, and of course you can call a JavaScript function with less arguments than it has, and the remaining arguments just get set to undefined. So we all often end up with code that checks is are the values on, uh, is is the uh, is that argument missing? If it is, by default. Um, actually, we probably usually write a slightly simpler code than this. We probably do an equals equals null, which is not quite correct. It's correct for most cases. But uh, you know, sometimes you actually genuinely meant to pass null as an argument. Um, actually, the pattern I see most often is like flavor equals flavor or. Oh, um, yeah, uh, which of course uh, breaks if you want to pass in booleans. <coughs> so, yeah, it, it's one of those kind of slightly hairy things and uh, also just, just extra code for no reason. Uh, ES6, you can write, uh, you can just put your defaults up here and it works same as that code. In fact, that it should be what it compiles to in Babel. So again, that's a fairly low cost thing. Actually, you know, I noticed I didn't say that uh, for log is fairly low cost. But it's, it's horrifying to code to generate that. You can go and try it on Babel, you can decide whether you want that or not. Uh, I think it'll check that arguments dot length instead of um, because you pass it on the final function. Uh, and that would be an argument. Uh, no, I think the semantics are actually at the basis of undefined arguments. So if oh, you can actually yeah, pass yeah. an undefined, then you'll get the defaults. Okay. No, no, it's, it's, not, it's, it's not using arguments or leg. Yeah, um, I'm saying that's so based if you on. So undefined in, then it would just be. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. I'm, I'm actually saying that based on looking at Babel output, and, and okay. that's not always. I mean, that's usually correct, but it's possible it's not. I, I think that's probably right. You'd have to read the uh, the S6 yeah. to, to, to make it sure. <laughs> Did that time you know. <laughs> well, they, uh, well, they, uh, <laughs> it's very dense. Would you not be able to pass in null? You would not be able to pass in an undefined argument. You can pass in null. Yeah. Um, quick question about being fine. Uh, why would you write type of it? Why wouldn't you just flavor equals undefined? Um, because. God, this is just one of those idioms which I just do. You uh, said uh, yes. yeah. yeah. it Yes, yeah. It would because it's, it's um, declared up there in, in the scope. But you would get a reference error if it, if it wasn't so that. Um, yeah, but, but there I don't think that's obvious. You used to be able to write when you're going to find the job, so it might be a hangover. Yeah, you still can. You still can. Yeah, you can. 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 You yeah, we have, uh, there, there are so many things in JavaScript where you just kind of do them. Like, I always use triple equals. I mean, in, in all, almost all cases, double equals would be fine, but there's some cases and you just do it because yeah. it, 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 it has time to, to remember all the, uh, <laughs> all the exceptions. You <laughs> can't overwrite it if you pass in the use, um, um, I think if you use script, it doesn't allow you to do that. Is that correct? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you should, yeah, you should, you should, you should, should be using script, script, but yeah, not everyone is. <laughs> While we're on this type of path, um, ES6 actually introduced a new wacky edge case of JavaScript, where if in the function eat cake, if you later describe, if you later declared let flavor, um, you would now get a temporal dead zone error on that line because you can't refer to a, a variable that's defined as a let further inside the function. Would it let you define a let even though you already have an argument that 
Was it actually? Uh, possibly, yeah, I'm not I, sure. I, I, I don't know. Yeah, the the type of X equals <laughs> undefined used to be totally safe and never error. Yeah. Now it occasionally will error if you've got something like right, that. Yes, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, and then those I'm not sure if it affects exactly that, but yeah, you're right. I think you're right. Was it just that you didn't have enough already? The other thing that's, that's new in mean, function arguments is that if you want to have uh, variable numbers of arguments, um, you now have a REST operator. Uh, so previously, if you wanted uh, multiple arguments, I kind of mixed the S S index in there, I shouldn't have. But, uh, but yeah, you, you, you get you could uh, you could just specify no arguments here in your thing, and then uh, you have an arguments variable, which is like a special variable, which is almost like an array, but not quite, just when you need it to be. That um, <laughs> uh, you can kind of you can check for the uh, for the arguments. Um, but now there's a much cleaner way of doing that. You can just say dot dot dot, and that that will obviously have an array of all the all the remaining arguments. So it's also possible to say like take a couple of arguments. And then the dot 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 at the end to just like slurp up with the rest. Um, so yeah, that, that's that's useful for those cases. I mean, you don't do that, that often, but it's useful for the cases where you do. And I'm actually not going to show it, but I actually haven't shown it. But you can do the inverse thing when you call a function. So if you want to call a function, if you have an array, you want to call a function with a bunch of things. You can you can, put, you can use the dot 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 there, which means you never use, you need to use the function dot 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 again. It's really useful for the constructors. You can't use it like the constructor. Ah, oh, yes, yeah. Uh, so, so browser support, cool, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Firefox. Uh, but uh, again, eh, the, uh, the cost of using this data is pretty low. You, you, you should be okay. So, next thing. Uh, this, this is uh, also like, like uh, tying with, uh, with uh, arrows, my favorite feature. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, <coughs> So yeah, uh, the structuring is, is a little bit hard to explain on the other things, I think. Um, but uh, it's basically a way of doing this. So, so say look, we've got this object here, and I, and I now, and I see this object came from somewhere else, and I now want to get some of the, some of the things out of it. So I want to get the flavor and the filling out and put them into variables. So this is the old way of doing it. I take flavor and it equals cake.flavor, and filling equals cake.filling. You probably find you do that kind of thing quite a lot. You receive like a an object full of um, full of options or something like that, or all kinds of things, and you want to extract a bunch of bits of it. Um, and this structure just gives you a shortcut for doing that. So this this down here is just a shortcut for this. It will compile to it in, in label, for example. Um, and what this is doing is saying declare flavor and filling as variables and set them to cake.flavor and cake.filling. It's a bit of a weird syntax, it's a bit of a, if it's the first time you've seen it, you might be going a little bit, oh, what, what the hell's going on? Uh, <laughs> but uh, it's just some, just one of those things that just shorts and things that makes it so much more obvious. Now, now, if I read that, especially if this, this is lot, there's loads more, if, if I'm doing it for a whole bunch of stuff, um, it can be a bit like, you know, there's a lot of just weird to like, oh yeah, that does that, that does that, that does that, that does that. With this, it's much easier to look at it very, very quickly and be like, yeah, okay, I see what it does. It's destructuring it. Um, so yeah, that, that's the very basics of destructuring. Um, destructuring also works for multiple levels. So here I have cake, which is a baker, which is also which is an object. So, I, so this is saying, declare a variable called name. And into that variable, put, put baker.cake.baker.name. So yeah, you can and you can do that quite deeply, and which is really useful, particularly with stuff coming back from APIs. Yeah. Can destruction work a bit like PHP's list function? Um, so you can list two variables, do a array dot split, and it will auto assign. Yes, I think it's been a while since I've written PHP, but uh, yes, so list can be used as the uh, left hand side of a yeah. Yes. Yeah, it should be the same thing. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the thing that I found with this is that when I first saw it, I just I can't, kind of found it quite hard to grok it. It's kind of almost that, that let is kind of just an addresser to the field mm -hmm. that you want, basically. Yes. Like, so, like, the, this example isn't too bad, but when you see some of the massive examples, it's just like. Yeah, I've, you, you've got to be careful how you use it. Mm -hmm. I mean, 
but it can, it can, it, you get you get more used to it and the more you see it, mm -hmm. and I you know I find it a lot easier because it, you're, it's essentially saying like, this is the shape of the thing I'm expecting, and here are the holes. Yeah. But just give me the holes. I expect a bigger example. Of the I yeah I. I, I so I, I, I've been trying to kind of keep my examples to like only a few lines each, yeah, but yeah, yeah, you're right, a, uh, yeah. a bigger example of the machine doesn't yeah. become a variable. No, but, so basically yeah. it's a variable, it's not, it's not a leaf. But if you did comma vector, is that valid? If I... After the name, yeah, yeah, comma vector. Yes, yes, yeah. I believe that would be valid, yeah. yeah. Can, can you use certain constant in these structures as well? Yes, right? yes, absolutely. Yeah. You can also use bar, but don't. <laughs> <laughs> Um, okay, uh, yeah, destructuring also works with arrays. Um, the thing you destructure into doesn't need to be a non linear array. Um, so let's uh, just take the first two elements of it. There's some slats as well to set up. Yes, I've got that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the array have holes in it. Could I get chopped on one? Yeah, yeah, in fact, funny you should say that. Um, <coughs> yeah, you get the missing uh, uh, elements. So you do that. And yeah, you can also have squares. So, uh, which works the same as we saw in the function called that earlier. So yeah, there's all this stuff that's been used in various places. So this says, like, take the first one and then take, you know, the rest of this becomes an array of cherry and pineapple, and this becomes chocolate. So that's not spread, that's rest. Yes, so rest, it's called spread other places, so yeah. Well, you rest and spread are different, but they're the same. Uh, oh, it's called spread, spread's the other way around, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah you're right. Um, yeah, actually, actually, all this syntax works the other way around as well, for creating stuff, I'm going to show that in a bit. Yeah, um, and you can mix um, array and object structure. So I can put an array as a bit as a part. I can destructure a an object that contains an array that contains an object, all that kind of stuff. Uh, the rest always have to go at the end of the array. Did you have it? So you no, 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 you, it's, it's not, you, you could uh, you could have first cake dot 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 other cakes and then last cake. Yeah. Oh, uh, what happens if uh, you fuck up? <laughs> and, uh, you know, if you're sort of got this massive destructuring thing and then you make a typo in one of the keys somewhere, does it just say undefined? Or does uh, it throw an error? You, uh, well, definitely with Babel, you get the same error that you would get if you wrote the code manually. Um, which can be confusing. Because, but in general, you, you get things like, you know, like trying to access key, whatever, on undefined. Okay. Yeah, it's okay. As long as you understand that it's doing that. You're okay. I imagine as browsers support it more, um, you'll get better, you'll get proper errors from the browser. The browser will, under, will actually be running the code and will understand what, what you wrote and give you an error message that kind of is appropriate for it. Very good question. Yeah. Can you use destructuring and default parameters? So yes. So you can basically say, say like, give me this thing, like right away over here, it yeah. exists. Yeah. You can also use destructuring in the arguments of your function. So you can use that to kind of say, like, this function takes an object which contains these keys, and I want the keys as, uh, uh, out as, as variables very within the function. But I also didn't show that, just because it's the same case. Uh, can you put uh, rest operators uh, twice? Oh, uh, I think that was a good question. I don't know what I, that's, yeah. that's on the server. Oh, no. Yeah, I would say you probably can't. I can't think of how you, you can, can, but uh, it would go well in the DNA. The different notes, maybe. So, yeah, I, no, I, I'm assuming that's a compiler, but uh, okay. I've never tried it, so uh, I know you can with spread. Yes, spread makes sense, so that's the, the, the inverse when you're creating an array. I'm going to show you in a bit. Um, yeah, so yeah, that's that's the
Okay, so, so a few people. Um, so, um, so the S6 introduces syntax for doing modules. Um, it doesn't actually specify exactly how the modules, are, how the loaders for modules are going to work. Um, but it provides, it does specify syntax which can be mapped onto the existing one. That, that's how it's working at the moment. So it's just kind of different syntax for, like, say, your your, um, your common JS modules. Um, so, um, so on the right, on the left, I have like a, a version in sort of Node style and common JS style, uh, and also the Calse module, which is a fantastic module. I highly recommend it. <laughs> um, <laughs> also from Perl. Uh, uh, and on, on the right, I've got like, the same thing in ES6. So there's a new keyword you can say import Calse from, and then the file you're importing it from, um, and uh, the nice thing about that is where whereas in whereas in um, in common JS or that node, it's kind of it's just a function call require and we just kind of rely for when we do stuff like browser when we're building the browser, uh, we just kind of rely on you not being sneaky. Um, because otherwise you can't actually figure out what, what needs to be included. Um, with uh, new with the S6 modules, you're kind of guaranteed that it's um, that uh, I think can statically, without running the code, run through it and find out what modules it uses. So that, that's some basic kind of advantages. And uh, yeah, that's uh, what's, uh, <laughs> what the Calse module does. <laughs> After that's asking Cal's. That's a first non cake example. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can actually say I'm for cake and uh, always find some stuff from the build system. Oh, I'll think that after an ASCII case or anything fun like that. <laughs> I almost um, distracted myself even more from my <laughs> by going and writing one, but yeah. <laughs> and there's this thing we call your pain. So, uh, the, the other thing it lets you do is do selective import. So, say we didn't have selective import you know, on, on, the, uh, on the left. We can import Calse and we get the object, which is the module, and it has like functions within it. And then we could like, if we wanted to extract stuff from it, we could like get the save function out thing. It was Calse that's saying, get a think function out, which obviously makes the kind of thing instead of say. Um, and uh, we could use them. But, um, but we can use what's basically the destructuring uh, assignment syntax instead uh, within the, in the import. So this is just saying, from the Calse module, get the save function and the think function. So that's really nice. I mean, you, you know, if you just want to get certain things out, it's just much neater. I mean, obviously, in a, in the node style, you probably would import it first and then get stuff out like that. We might kind of we might do something slightly neater, but <coughs> yeah, it's uh, it's nice to have that. It's nice to have that kind of just. I, I find I find the import syntax uh, just really easy to read. Like you 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 go you open the file with that kind of stuff, and you can immediately see what it's importing, which I think is really nice. Um, and to make your own modules, there's an export function. So where we're saying, and again, in node style, we have that special variable called module to be assigned module that exports what we want to export. Um, in, uh, in ES6, you can just say export and then what you want to export. And you can export functions, variables, something, anything like that. And it's roughly the same. The semantics are slightly different, but uh, not enough that it's worth really going into them at the moment. Um, so I was talking to Fabian about this on last Friday, Friday before, um, and he, he raised the fact that uh, import is not the function, and so uh, so you can't sort of dynamically import. It, it's exactly or, yeah. Which uh, there, there is actually a dynamic importing mechanism. You, you can load, you can get loaders, and there's there's, there's a separate thing for doing dynamic loading. That's right for that PS six, though, right? Yeah. Oh, is that not it? Yeah. The yeah. system object is. Yeah. Like, um, but in, in general, for like for say building for, for certain nodes, like dynamic importing is fine. I, I generally think it's maybe not a great idea because it does great things, but um, it's a static kind of stuff. But um, but for nodes, you can kind of get away with it. On the web, you just can't because you can't just require something that you didn't know about when you built it because it's not going to be there. Browser supply supports dynamic, not if statements, but if you have it in a function call and it will require it more for times. So it can be useful, but. Yeah, okay. Um, what? Well, that's compilation stuff. Yeah. Right, right, but right, it still oh. has it still has to know about it. Yeah. yeah um, I mean and you, you can you can do stuff like I mean and uh, yeah. So you some I mean on a, on a browser thing like if you wanted to do a dynamic import you pretty much have to do it as a, as a synchronous thing. Mm -hmm. That's a whole separate thing. So so yeah, I mean I, I think it's quite good to be separating 
separating out those things. So we just we know when we use the imports that it's going to work, even if we need to package it up. That you know you've got to have be able to have a tool which will know everything that gets imported, which you just don't quite have with. Uh, but yeah, in practice, it's not that big. By the way, I think in practice it's mainly just nice to have a syntax which is pretty easy to read, it's really obvious. Uh, yes, it runs. I have no idea what they're planning on doing with that. I haven't they fully decided on how um, the loaders are going to work yet. Um, I don't know if that's next, but I, I, I haven't actually read the bit of the spec. I think it might be in a separate spec or something like that. Um, but uh, if you're using something like Babel, uh, it will, you can basically tell it what type of module system your, 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 the rest of your system is, is expecting and it will convert it to that. So you can say, like, I'm using node style import the requires, it will just convert it to that. Or maybe I'm using AMD, like uh, asynchronous module definitions, but the Fire.js style, and it will, yeah, it can output that. Which is also quite nice, because it means you can write it in just one syntax, and then whatever crazy that module system you need to actually make your app all hold together, it can produce that. Um, and that, should, that is generally very, very low cost as well. Yeah. yeah. Uh, a plug for a, a tool I use, um, at work we use JSPM, um, which is a sort of package manager for this stuff. I'm the hoodie uses the system.js polyfill for the current standard of the module learning spec, which is kind of really in flux and all that kind of stuff. Um, but it allows you basically to do ES6 modules and load all like node modules and, and things that require JS and all that kind of stuff, kind of seamlessly. It occasionally you get problems. But when it's working, it's amazing. It's the best cool. thing in the world. Yeah, I, I, I haven't read that. I've been using Webpack with um, with no with NPM, which is which yeah, was a similar kind of thing. Of, of it. again, when it works, it works most of the time. Occasionally, you find like, much which you can't do it for a couple of days. Yeah. <laughs> <It goes wrong. laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah, System JS also allows you to have circular dependencies, which is not something browser quite does to do. Oh, okay. Okay. It's, yeah, it's not possible with Com JS. Well, okay, as long as you don't write modules like exports. <laughs> if you hit that, then yeah, it's great. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, that, that, that is one thing. The, the, yes, um, yeah, uh, the, the semantics of the ES, area 6 modules do permit circular imports. Um, and that, 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 was, that was what the, the one bit of the uh, slight semantic differences I was uh, crossing over that area, because I don't want to go into it. Um, so, we might be talking for a while. <laughs> Um, cool, so on to the most uh, controversial of the, uh, I think, of the uh, year 6 editions. A lot of people really, really hate this. I'm kind of ambivalent about it. I'm all right with it. But, uh, yeah, feel free to hate it. Uh, <laughs> so, um, yeah, uh, everyone's been doing classes in JavaScript for a while. Uh, I've always, I mean, JavaScript is a uh, prototype based language, which is slightly different, but it's kind of got stuff on top that kind of makes, it's always had stuff that kind of makes it feel a little bit like, like a class-based thing and people kind of treat it as a class-based thing a lot of the time. So um, in, in ES5 we, we, uh, we make our classes like a part, uh, we make constructor functions which come out of class, we assign prototype copy, uh, prototype object onto the, onto the uh, function which is not actually the prototype, it becomes a template for prototype, which is a terribly confusing thing to call it. Um, <laughs> But um, and, and that's that's fine. Um, but um, but yeah. So people are doing that all the time. They mean classes, but they write. They have to write that. And all the uh, class syntax in ES6 does is it gives a actually it gives a syntax which when you mean classes you can write classes. It's semantically almost exactly the same as uh, so these are almost exactly the same. There's a very very small <coughs> difference, but it's not really relevant most of the time. Um, and yeah, it just, it just makes you, it just lets you write things um, in, a bit in a, a way that's more, that's more clear. I mean, a lot of people would argue that you shouldn't really be using classes in JavaScript a lot of the time. I mean, the kind of style that's becoming more popular now is still a more kind of functional kind of style, which often means, yeah, not using that many classes, um, but it's, it's there. Can I give an attention to your possibly you can I guess in I I forgot to include those. And it's amazing. They've been in since it's really fine. You you what? They they've always been, they've been in the language, but they haven't been in the syntax. You can now write if if, if I wanted to be to be a uh, rather than a method, I wanted to be a property, I could write get space eat. And now whenever you try to access the get property, uh, it will return that value. I'm pretty sure that's from the 
where it lays. They were in the S5. Um, but there was no syntax for them. You, you could do it. There was no syntax for them as well. Really? Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's a syntax syntax. to modern oh. compact object literal syntax. Um, they're really important for things like classes for iterators. Oh, cool. so, I, I yeah. had no idea that's in the one on the S5. No one ever used it, but yeah, yeah it was really best for Yes. Yeah. In object literals. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Yeah, I had no idea about that. <laughs> It's um, really weird in the context of the S5, it's strange. Yeah, it's quite uh, as well, isn't it? Mm -hmm. no, it's it's just like, just like yeah, yeah, the and then right. so you get space mm -hmm. braces, just like eat the. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah, okay. So, um, cool. so yeah, uh, you might even do any S5 as well. Personally, I, I, I like the fact that I could, I could use getters and setters because I have had times in the past been playing with languages where I've needed them for certain things, but I. I haven't actually used them yet in AS6 because I think it's the kind of thing we kind of shouldn't use it unless we really have to. Um, something I've definitely used, like guess and setters without the syntax support for in in, in, um, in, our, in all the JavaScript was when we factoring stuff to kind of support an old interface with a new thing, or or even to provide warnings when you try to access properties that you shouldn't really access anymore, to kind of move big things from one way to another way. But yeah, I mean, I'm sure that's a useful one, but you should. Be careful, be careful, get the setters. Uh, think of the poor people who have to come after and understand what you've done. <laughs> uh, so, you can also do uh, inher so inheritance with the S6 classes. Uh, inheritance in JavaScript is, is, in ES5 is it's, it's pretty horrible. I mean, I, I don't know, does anyone like that? <laughs> yeah. I know that this is one of those things which is quite a common thing to do in, um, in JavaScript. But I would bet that a, that a good proportion of JavaScript developers, if you sat down and said, right, write me, do, write me a class that inherits from another class, they wouldn't be able to do it without looking it up. Um, a lot of people use libraries to, this is kind of a, way, a way that works um, here. It works in, in AS5 without using libraries. I think it's clearly the easiest way of doing it in AS5. Uh, but it's still kind of, you know, nothing about this says I am making a, an object that extends another object. It's just messy. Um, in ES6, you can just say uh, class, I mean, extends other class, and it does that for you. Which is cool, except that there's a little bit of a fear uh, yeah, that people will then go and make lots of classes that extend from other classes, make deep class hierarchies, which is just a terrible, terrible idea. Mm -hmm. like, <coughs> yeah, just use it sparingly, please. <laughs> uh, so, browser support. Uh, not in Firefox. James? What? <laughs> 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 I think it's coming soon, isn't it? It's like James version or something? Ah, okay. Uh, it's soon. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, but um, yeah, if it's in the other ones, and also, yeah, um, it's, you can use it in, in Babel, and the, the, the cost is. It's, it's oh, really? quite, it doesn't compile quite down to, to, to the code you would have written. It's a bit more kind of careful about about maintaining the exact semantics, so so there's a bit of an extra cost using it in Babel. I, uh, I, I heard that it was kind of actually crazy the Babel implementation. Maybe that was that was a good six months ago. Uh, it it, 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 I guess it depends on your tolerance. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I'm kind of observing batshit crazy for, for, for what it does with generators, but uh, <laughs> but yeah, uh, you you can. It, it's, it produces larger code than you would write yourself, which you, you may or may not care about. But yeah, if you're thinking of using it, go try it in um, in, in the Babel. Try Babel in first and see if you're comfortable with that. <coughs> cool. So uh, in enhanced object literals, uh, this is uh, we've already we've already kind of touched on this a little bit. This is the this is the inverse of the destruction bind stuff we've already seen. Yeah, in a lot of ways. So you can now, there's just a bunch of shortcuts for writing uh, object literals. So object literals are just like when you write an object as, you know, with, uh, like, like in a way that looks a bit like JSON, that kind of thing. Um, so, you know, where you, if, if you're doing this, uh, where, you, you, where you're kind of creating an object with a bunch of keys, and each of those keys is set to a variable of the same name, you can now just omit the, uh, the double bits. This is, uh, so this is doing exactly what that's doing. Uh, you might say, I don't do that that often. Um, I, I found when writing year 6 that I name my variables so I can do that. <laughs> um, <laughs> and it just shortens my code and makes things clearer, I think. Um, uh, I quite often find that I use destruction to get a variable out, do some stuff to it, and then use this to restructure it back in again. Mm. 
particularly because I uh, tend to like now uh, code where I'm mostly doing immutable stuff, so I'm never mutating objects, I'm just I'm always creating new objects. So a lot of these features make that, e make that easier. Um, so there's also a shorter way of writing uh, methods on objects, which is similar to the syntax we saw with classes. So rather than uh, take a uh, property over there and assign it a function, um, we can write this syntax, which is like the name, brackets, probably. we can stick uh, arguments in there, and then, and then the curlies, and then the body of your function. And all that's giving you is you just don't have to write code on function anymore. Um, <coughs> it's, not, it's not a big win. It's, uh, it's nice when you're writing function, when you're writing objects with lots and lots of functions in them. So sometimes find yourself, find yourself doing. Um, we also have um, opt, which is uh, actually called spread. Mixed up using spread. Use spread, or should we use rest? The rest, or should we use spread? Mm -hmm. Yes, this is spread. Uh, we can do object spread, which basically means. Um, we can take an object and we can say, I want all of the keys and I want all the values of this object, but with a set of other things put on top. So I want original cake, but with topping changed the sprinkles, chocolate sprinkles. That's something at the example I've given up here, use the underscore dot extend. Um, just assuming that quite a lot of people are familiar with that and have done that before. Of course, with our underscore dot extend, you have to give it an empty object at the beginning, because otherwise it mutates, because it always mutates its first argument. Uh, there is now an object that's assigned as well, which is exactly what I, which is exactly what underscore dot extend is, and that's now part of the language. But of course, I always use uh, underscore dot extend, so that's like a function I use all the time. And now it's in the language, and everyone can use it because there's also a uh, syntax that does it better. <laughs> and but this is again a great thing for writing immutable code um, because uh, this is a great way. To well, rather than saying original cake got topping, it was chocolate sprinkle, I can make a new cake with uh, new topping, and now I have two cakes, which is bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and it's got good scores actually. Um, yeah, it's in the latest versions of all the browsers, which is cool. Um, it's also, uh, if you are compiling it with Babel, very low cost. Um, I think, yeah, no, it's very, very low cost because it's just. If you're writing a shorter version, and Babel's just expanding it back out to the longer version. So, uh, another thing, promises. I'm not going to get I'm assuming that a lot, everyone knows about promises. Well, I guess not everyone. Um, but, uh, but lots of people have been talking about promises for a long time. Um, all, the, the, all that's changed is promises used to be a library you, you reported, now promises actually come in the language. Um, so, uh, that's, yeah. You no longer. Uh, the, the good thing about that is, if you've got a library that wants to use promises, it no longer has to say, "Oh, you need to." Use, it has to, has to have a dependency. It no longer has to say, "You have to include another promises library." And we don't get that situation which we do, at, which we have at the moment, where, where you import like multiple libraries and they're all using different promises libraries. It's like, that, yeah, same, same thing that again and again and again. So now it's, just, it's in the line, it's in the line, would you use that version? It's fine. Um, yeah, that's that, and they are supported almost everywhere. And cool. uh, that, that this is one of the few things that's not a um, not a syntactic change. So uh, that can be polyfills. You can use, you can get a, um, get, if you do, if you if you must support, if you want to use promises where this isn't yet supported, get a, rather than using a promises library, get a promises polyfill that just um, lets yeah pretend if, if if the browser doesn't support it, replaces it, otherwise it doesn't. So we're getting kind of getting close to the end of the talk. Um, Template strings. Um, these, are, these are pretty cool. These, these, these are going to look a bit weird. So you see them before. Um, template strings are like little string templates. Uh, <laughs> 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 that was much, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> uh, they're, they're, if you view some of the handlebars or something like that, they're like that, but built into the language um, with less features. Uh, so rather than kind of building up uh, strings by going something plus something else plus something else, you can use backticks which is what template string is, and then you can use dollar and braces, and inside the braces you can have an arbitrary JavaScript expression, and then that gets interpolated into the string. Um, so, uh, and yeah, they're, they're pretty useful. Uh, I just, I mean, how often do you like go like that with pluses? And it's just a bit messy, and, and that's just a lot easier to read, it's a lot easier to see what you meant. Yeah. Can you use functions inside the... Yes, uh, yeah, the arbitrary expression inside 
Yeah, but you would have massive pains, but probably should probably show the BS functions there. Right, yeah. now you can also have multi line. Yes, you can also have multi line strings. Mm -hmm. And uh, for like the maybe two people in the room who care about this, uh, yeah, in fact, it's actually kind of weird. It's, uh, it, it changes the. It, 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 oh, sorry. These have meant that they've had to add two extra top level states to the Alexa. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> True story. <laughs> There's one of the people. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, it's just for you. Uh, cool. Uh, there's also um, something called tags templates, which I'm not going to talk that much about. And to be honest, you don't need to really know much about these right now because they're not really much use to you right now. Uh, but they are going to be used for once library people start doing stuff with them. Tags templates, <coughs> you, um, you can put a name just before there, and that makes the template be different. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, there's none that come, it doesn't ship, it ships with one, but that's the one we're talking about, and so it ships with string.4, which, um, which, which means that in, inside your string, uh, backslash n doesn't mean a uh, new line anymore. Uh, but the, but it, what you can do is, is library people, library authors can write their own things, and they, and they have control now of how interpolations work. So, in this example here, this is an imaginary HTML um, uh, tagged template type, uh, which just um, uh, HTML encodes each of its arguments, each of its interpolation arguments. So that just lets you kind of, yeah, like write, um, like uh, code generating HTML from strings in a safer way, in a much easier way. Um, I'm sure people will start writing uh, SQL like their SQL libraries, <laughs> but um, that, that encodes, uh, that, that, that automatically escape things properly and make it hard for you to write SQL injections. And people, I think, well, I'm sure people will do all kinds of uh, uh, clever and inadvisable things. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, I'm not going to talk you through this, but that, that's, uh, that's my implementation of how that HTML, of how that HTML tags. Uh, template might work. So, yeah, it's not that complicated, but yeah, I don't want to talk about it. How do you um, register it? You don't register it, it's a, it's, it's a function. Yeah, oh, it's, it's, just function. it's a function in scope. Yeah, oh, wow. It's the same. It's a, it's, it, it's a function, but it's just called in a weird way. Mm -hmm. it's basically, a function that receives a list of each string, like each bit in here, and then each bit in here. It's two separate, array, two separate arrays, and then melds them together. That's cool. Yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I'm, I'm interested. See what people do with it. I'm sure there's going to be some really regrettable things that go <laughs> and but probably also some good stuff. Probably involving cakes at one point. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was really shocked actually. I think I already supported that around. No one seems to be using it, but yeah, it's still on the latest browsers. Um, and also it's in um, it's in Babel and in Babel again, fairly low cost. Like a few it just compiles most of the time just down to uh, the tag list also is probably a bit weird, it's a bit weird, but um, the uh, the regular form is uh, is fine. When you spoke about var and let, it was like just always use let now. Yeah. Is that the case with this? Do you think you use that everywhere? Or uh, just only when only when only, only when you actually need it. I wouldn't I wouldn't use uh, backticks if you weren't going to use the interpolation. Mm -hmm. uh, because maybe you might accidentally put stuff in. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I would I would usually use um, template strings instead of um, instead of the instead of uh, adding the yeah, most of the time. Yeah, I kind of uh, yeah, still settling on my exact style for that. But yeah, I think mean, I think it's clearer most of the time, even though my editor wasn't properly highlighted yet. <laughs> cool. So uh, the very last thing, and then we can get to the part. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is the one thing where it's just. If this is the first time you've seen it, I'm going to try, but you're probably not going to understand it because it takes, it will take a while, it'll take a few tries probably to understand exactly what's going on here. But, um, but hey, I'm going to try. So, <laughs> and they are really cool. Um, they probably aren't something you need to know right now. Um, I think that's something that's going to become more useful as the kind of JavaScript style shifts towards them. But people will figure out more what your ways of using them are in JavaScript. Uh, this is something that Python's had for a long time, it's great for Python. JavaScript's a different language. <coughs> uh, what is a generator? A generator is a function that can return multiple things uh, over time. Um, so a write function, you write a generator function by putting a little star after the name. 
that indicates it's, it's a generator, and then you have yields. Yields are a little bit like returns, apart from they don't stop the function from running. Um, so um, you, it's like basically like being able to return multiple things. So and you can, um, you can call a function, you can call it a uh, generator, and you get back an iterable thing. So a thing that you can iterate over with, say, the log syntax that we saw earlier. Um, so here I'm, I'm iterating over this, and it's going to first yields that. So this comes down to here. It prints out that. It prints out chocolate. Then that. Puts a that. Then that. Puts a that, and then it finishes, and, and that finishes as well. Um, so that's kind of that's a simple version of it. That's not hugely useful. You could have just returned an array with those three things. <laughs> um, you can also do infinite generators. You can do generators that return infinitely long things. So this generator just counts the numbers starting from say whatever number you give it. So starting from zero, it just goes one, two, three, four, five, six, forever. I can then iterate over this, out of these. But if at any point, at any point from here, I can just break and I can just stop iterating over this. And, and once we're not iterating over <coughs> anymore, this will stop running, because this will only run as, as needed to fulfill the things requested from it. Um, and yeah, I, I said it's going to be hard to explain if, you, if you've not used this. If, if you've used generators somewhere else, you'll be thinking, oh yeah, you know, that's, that's useful. I know, I know what I do with that. Um, if you haven't, you're probably thinking, why the hell would I want that? Um, it's useful for lots of things. It's useful for being able to write code that doesn't, that, that's more separated out. So, for example, I, you know, I, can, I can write some bits of my code that just like, yeah, I, I, um, I don't know how much you need of this, so I'll just give you infinitely much of it. I'll give you everything. Um, and other bits of code can, like, can just be like, you can just say, like, oh, you'll process this, and it will process it, or process infinite much, and infinite amounts of it. And then right at the end, you can say, I only wanted 10, and it will only do the actual processing to give you 10. So it kind of lets you be, it lets your code be lazy, which is really cool. Uh, the other thing it lets you do, um, the other thing it's really useful for is, I, I talked about iterators earlier, iterators working with these. It's a really useful, it's a really um, natural way to write iterators. If you have to write an iterator function uh, for your custom object to, so that it can be used in, in Forlog, your iterator function is probably going to be a generator, because that's, that's, the, that's the easiest way of writing it. You can do it without a generator, but yeah, it's, it's just it's <coughs> not as easy. Um, so, uh, yeah, browser support. Um, yeah, apparently it's actually in these browsers, which I was surprised about. I don't mm -hmm. know as well as it's, uh, it's also in Babel, of course, as everything, but you would, it's just horrifying. <laughs> <laughs> so, go, 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 go get a generator example, put it into the Babel thing, and, and see what it does to your code. It's unbelievable. It, uh, it breaks it down into lots of little blocks and then makes a state machine and puts it into a big switch statement. <laughs> all of your, if, if you have if statements or wrong or loops or anything like that, you won't see them in there. They'll, they'll be like, emulated on top of this big state machine. Uh, <laughs> it's, it's cool. I mean, it lets you just do it, but uh, it's the only way they could do it. But yeah, uh, it'll, be, it's better, it'll be better once it's properly supported everywhere. Okay, so you were going to. It wasn't really a question, it was a comment. Um, in, uh, in Chrome bit of Firefox, that's the not um, outside of the, the content. Yeah. Um, there's a whole heap of generators being used for um, oh, asynchronous code. Those are those so. are JavaScript 1.8 generators, though. So so that's um, uh, Mozilla when carrying on developing JavaScript uh, and uh, have made new versions of JavaScript. Mm -hmm. Those have diverged from ECMAScript, which is the official JavaScript we actually use on the web. <laughs> 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 now the the, the ES6 proposals started generators started off being proposed as being the ones that Mozilla has already implemented, right. which are essentially taken directly from Python. Right. Um, but there's some slight semantic things that are quite, that are not quite right for JavaScript, maybe, arguably. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know, I, I probably would have gone with the ones from Python, so I did Python, and, that, and that's and they're simple, but yeah, they, it, it, uh, yeah. so anyway, the, the, those generators are subtly different, and uh, be, so be careful if you're, if you're trying to convert to one or the other. My point was that it's an alternative to promises. Uh, oh. James, in about a month, I'll be giving a talk on Ooh. asynchronous code and, and nice. that's okay. a basic way. But actually, generators have to be used with promises to produce this result. Mm. Uh, you could, uh, in okay. libraries like code, you could use funks as an alternative, which would just call back to the particular right. uh, process. Okay. But uh, yeah. Alright, thanks for looking. Yeah, that's 
would definitely recommend going, going to the talk about, uh, about async stuff because that I, I, I was also going to very quickly mention the, uh, the async um, away syntax. I, I did that did, did on my uh, like lightning talk uh, a few weeks ago as well. Uh, it, it's brilliant. Um, it's, it's another syntax that's actually fairly semantically fairly, fairly close to generators, but lets you yeah, write a synchronous code but without all the callbacks or all the promises thing, all that kind of stuff. It's pretty cool. But yeah, it's not an ES6. But it is available, so you can use it today. It's an edge as well. No, it's all there. Yeah, I can't I can ever. Microsoft has a new stuff. Yeah, I should definitely have. It goes back away. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, I'm, I'm almost done. Uh, there's other stuff I didn't talk about. Um, there's maps and loop maps, which are um, like objects, but it's like the keys that have to be strings. And weak maps um, actually allow you to actually don't hold on to, I mean, the garbage collector doesn't hold on to stuff, which if that sounds like something you want, then that's cool. If you don't know why you want that, you probably don't want it. <laughs> uh, it's really, really useful in, a, in, in some very, very rare situations. Um, also, symbols, I mentioned symbols actually a little bit, they give you that kind of unique keys. Uh, there's better Unicode support, it's not much better, it's still crazy. Um, yeah, uh, I, Tell you whole stories about Unicode and JavaScript that we want later on. Um, yeah, object.sign, that's basically a useful uh, extend, it's now in JavaScript. Who cares, though, because we've got spreads. Um, <laughs> and it's racist, I did actually talk about it's racist at the end. And it's probably other stuff that I missed out, I don't, I don't know about or forgot. Um, but yeah, I don't think there's anything big that I haven't mentioned. So, yeah, thanks for listening. Yes, uh, it's, 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 it's meant to be used with um, 
get the, the there's two eight guys and a couple really nicely. It's a proxy. It is proxy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah which I'm pretty sure the proxy is in the year six. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, it, it reflection is one of those things. I just, I hope you know how to use it. Um, I guess it's going to be useful for some people, but yeah. I think it's so, going to overtake a lot of things like object keys, but later. Yes. Not, not yeah. Like, not now. <laughs> in a function to whatever style, class, whatever. If you use an arrow function, um, can you still use this? No, you can't. Right, you okay. can okay. use, so use, use the old style. Yeah, you use the old function to do this. And definitely, yeah, there's, there's some stuff in D3 that's written in a way that actually... So D3 is, is very rare in JavaScript that it actually uses yeah. this context yeah, yeah, yeah. In, a, in a dynamic way, in a way that actually takes into account how JavaScript really works. Which is, yeah, no, very, very a few other JavaScript frameworks do that. Uh, but yeah, so it's the one that doesn't really benefit so much from that. Okay. I, 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 I imagine that they're pro that mm -hmm. probably uh, D3 is going to start, uh, or will eventually kind of migrate away from using this for that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. Just so you get the shorter syntax, because mm -hmm. it'll be yeah. really nice mm -hmm. for a lot, a lot of D3 things. Mm -hmm. yeah. I have a compassion to make that you are spreading. <laughs> no, 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 it's nothing to do with Fabian. It's, it's legit. I, uh, just I, I, I actually, uh, you might notice, I don't know so many panels in this um, talk. Yeah. 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 And uh, I, I, I haven't, I'm not ready to yet to make that, that fair job in my actual code. Right. But this was something we kind of try it out. It's a solid JavaScript code style. Yeah. Now. yeah. Well, 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 was that it? Standard. Standard. <laughs> <laughs> I resisted. Oh, I was. 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 No, I'm, I'm totally happy using uh, some columns with uh, ES5, but ES5 is quite a common nice to be if I object to see that. On a very closely related note, I would heavily recommend for a laugh um, replacing all your semicolons with commas. Um, so in arrow functions, uh, if you don't use the curly braces, it returns the, la the value of the last expression. And you can just have comma, 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 have like 15 dozen expressions and it will just return the last one like it was Ruby. It's Ruby. 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 You're terrible. <laughs> <laughs>